You are on a mission. You're motivated and ready to update your wardrobe. And you even went through your morning routine. You got like the best coffee because you set it in your calendar and you're like, I'm going to do my online shopping. I am going to find the right outfits for the season. Maybe I'm going to go into the store. And then as you're shopping, you take home all of your shopping bags and you realize you have this knot in the pit of your stomach and you're thinking, was it worth buying? all those pieces I just purchased. I'm bringing this up because if you are somebody who has not purchased a lot of items all at one time, the youngins like to call it a haul, where you like to buy everything at once for the season, or you're in that place in your life where you really did have to rebuild your wardrobe or create a new capsule or a foundation, so there had to be a lot of shopping involved. You might start second guessing the decisions that you made while you were shopping and you might find things wrong with what you have that you just purchased. I want to remind you that in life when we're doing something new sometimes we want to self-sabotage or really overthink things when we don't have to and if you're in this place this podcast episode is going to be a great reminder on how to stay focused on your end goal and what you want for yourself. I'm going to give you a super weird analogy, but it does have to do with self-sabotage. And I'm sure that somebody out there can relate to this, but think of shopping and investing in yourself and doing the thing that you want. Think of it as when you're dating, maybe you've had like a lot of bad dates, bad relationships, and then you meet that guy. He's so great. He actually lets you have your independence, respects your boundaries, is super kind. And then you start to think that something is wrong with him. Something is wrong with him because he is so different. He's just too awesome. So you start self-sabotaging by finding something to argue about or finding ways that maybe he's trying to play a game against you or something. And you are trying to make something good bad. I think that's such a good example of how as humans, we do this thing to protect ourselves and it could be scary to make big changes all at once. And when you are shopping, if you are shopping for a full wardrobe, it is making that big change all at once and it can feel a little overwhelming. It's exciting and happy, but again, you might go to that place where you're like, "Mm, I don't think I could pull that off. I'm not sexy enough. I'm not cute enough. My body is not a certain shape and you start asking yourself questions that you don't need to and making things not work that actually work for you. I don't want to let these moments hold you back from what you want for yourself, how you wanna look, how you wanna feel, and stop you from that vision you have for your personal goals as well. So if the pieces that you purchased looked and feel good in the fitting room, I'm sure they're gonna look and feel good at home, but You don't have to commit to them. I mean, you could return them, but before you make any returns, I want to give you a friendly reminder that you need to have your end goal in mind, that what you are trying to achieve is to feel your best, and to feel your best is investing in yourself and stepping out of what you were doing before. When you are shopping and building a new wardrobe, you are also trying to find the right pieces that mix and match well together, that create multiple outfits for you. And if you're working with a stylist or you did this on your own because you were going through one of our programs or you're just doing it on your own in general, you're shopping for a season or for this new thing in your life or travel, just know that you have to trust the process. You have to trust yourself as you're making intentional decisions and making sure from the beginning that you are very intentional with what's missing, what you want for yourself, and what your ultimate goal is with the shopping trip, that the pieces that you purchase do fit that. Let's go through some common buyer remorse feelings and how you can work through them. I do want to mention that sometimes these feelings are very valid. I'm not saying that when you're feeling buyer's remorse or feeling a regret over something that it's not a real thing. It is, but you need to learn how to work through it and make sure that you aren't doing it out of fear, out of fear of trying something new, out of fear of investing in yourself, out of fear that you made a wrong decision instead of 
actually not feeling good in it. So being able to separate what it is from the fear of it and if it really is a piece that you're not going to wear, because obviously if it really is something that you're not going to wear, then don't keep it. Number one, the cost of that one piece that I paid for costs more than my last haircut. Okay, so let me tell you, it doesn't matter what your budget is. I hear this all the time that there are certain pieces that you do fall in love with that end up costing a lot more than everything else that you purchased. Maybe in your whole life or maybe in this one shopping trip, but it is good to mix and match things that are lower end to mid range to high end because that's how you create a really elevated look. You can mix and match things that are different brands. If they fit well, they look good together. It does elevate your look to add those pieces that cost a little bit more. An example of things that do cost more are blazers, their jackets, their coats and shoes. Sometimes jewelry, if you're really into jewelry, but not necessarily. So when something costs more, it usually does have a justification behind it. So you're going to want to invest in the blazer that makes you feel like you're a million bucks because it fits well. Maybe it fits perfectly in the shoulders. You don't feel constricted yet. It still comes in the waist and it's that creamy, perfect color that you could wear with anything. I want you to remember that what you are paying for, the cost of it, it should line up with the cost of how you feel in it, how you look in it, how you can integrate it into your wardrobe. The majority of things that you put in your closet that cost more, they do have to be something that you feel like you can wear again, will be a good staple and really elevate your look. And in this case with the blazer example, a blazer is something that you could wear with a skirt, a dress, jeans, trouser pants. You could do the whole thing. It has so much versatility. And if you get the right color too, it works well with a lot of other colors that you might have in your closet or that maybe you purchased during that shopping trip. So don't let the cost of something make you feel like you shouldn't buy it for yourself. Because if you feel really good in it, you are going to pull that piece out again and again. And that is a whole goal of being able to shop for items that look good and feel good on you. Number two, it's the wrong size. If you were in the fitting room and you really liked the piece, maybe you get home and you realize, you know what? The size was not exactly what I thought it would be. Maybe the sleeves are too long. Maybe the pants are too long. Maybe I need to bring in the blazer in the waist, whatever it is. If you are second guessing it because of the size, even though it does potentially fit, you could get it tailored or you can get a different size. So don't start to question yourself so much that you're like, oh my gosh, it's not for me because it's the wrong size. And then you just want to return it and do nothing about it. I would say, think about if you got it tailored a little bit, if that's something that would make a difference or just getting a new size, exchanging it. Maybe you do really like it, but you're trying to make an excuse of why you should return it so you could save some money. But just returning it and exchanging it for another size will make a difference. Number three, I don't think I'm going to pull it out of my closet. This is a big one because I do ask clients as we're going through the shopping process, I want to make sure everything you buy are pieces that you will actually gravitate to. Obviously, if it's for like an event or a special occasion, that's not necessary. But in general, if you are shopping for your life, for everyday life, for work, you want to make sure that the pieces that you purchase, you will pull out of your closet. But here is the scenario where you might be self-sabotaging. If you have been stuck wearing a certain style or maybe certain pieces, like maybe you've been stuck doing like t-shirt and jeans and now you bought a blouse, you bought a nice sweater, you bought a skirt, you do have to realize that you have been stuck in a certain habit. You've been stuck in the habit of pulling out certain things from your closet. So now moving forward, it will create another habit of trying to take out new things and putting it together. I actually did have a client who was a guy and when we went shopping, he was a little bit in shock by how much he spent because he was like, I've never spent this much on clothes. And I've never bought so much all at once. And he said, I do like the pieces, but I'm scared I'm not going to wear it. So what he told me is that he said, I'm going to commit because we got 30 outfits. He said, I'm going to commit that for 30 days, 
I wear one new outfit every single day and I want to see how it feels. I want to make sure I'm wearing my pieces. And he said, I want to be intentional about this and get, he wanted to, he wanted to get results. He wanted to really feel into the process and just do the thing. And you know what he did? He messaged me a month later and he said that he wore everything and he loved it. He got attention from people. He made new friends. He actually felt like making dates with friends to go out when he was a lot more introverted and staying at home, just hanging out by himself. He actually felt like putting these pieces on really changed his outlook on life, what he wanted for himself and to try different things outside of his norm. So when you are saying and questioning, I don't think I'm going to pull this out of my closet. Again, is it fear? from the amount you're spending, or is it because you're actually not gonna pull it out? Like it doesn't look good on you. Give yourself time, give yourself time. It's not like you need to make a decision right away. You can take things home. I always suggest take things home with you, try them on again, play with it, play with it with other things in your closet. The majority of the pieces that you're gonna buy are not gonna be final sale. And I highly recommend do not buy things on final sale unless you are like a thousand percent confident you love something on you more than the price tag, big deal. So just try it on. New is not always easy, but on the other side, it starts to feel good and you start to see the results and you're like, okay, I get it. I get why this happened. If you're going through something that you feel that you failed at or a big change in your life, I have a special guest coming on and I'm starting something new that I am so excited to share with you. It's called the Lifestyled Series and it's going to be calls that are on Zoom where you get to be part of the conversation. So I'm inviting you to my first styled series with my friend Bianca Jean. She's a life coach that is passionate about helping people stop living small and getting out of their own way. And if you'd like to join this free call, you have to go into the link in the show notes and you'll find it there. You just register. I do want to share what the show notes mean because I talk about this all the time. So when you go to the episode of the podcast, if you scroll down to the description part, I like to put the links at the very top so it's super easy for you to find what I'm talking about. So when you go down to the description, you'll see a few links and one of them will be to register for the Lifestyle Series. And all you have to do is click it and it'll take you directly there. The way I'm envisioning this going is that we're going to have this conversation. I'll ask her questions. You'll get to hear more about how to overcome failure, what the other side looks like when you're working on something and you're trying to go into a new path and how to get there. We're going to talk about a lot of different parts about what it looks like when you fail and have to get up again. I'm gonna be sharing my own stories because I've gone through it so many times. I swear there's probably been four times in my life, my young life that I've really had to start over again. And I want people to see the hope and give themselves grace too, as they're going through something really hard. There's always the other side and the other side, although when you're in the middle of it, you can't see it, but we wanna help you achieve all your goals. So. If you're wondering why the heck I'm inviting somebody outside of fashion to come on as a guest, well, friend, if you have been part of this podcast or if you've worked with me, you know that I'm all about the deeper conversations. And I feel that all of life is intertwined together, especially when it comes to style. I like to look at the reason why you are dressing a certain way, how your life is connected to it, how it's affecting you. And sometimes you might find that when you feel stuck in one place, you're also stuck somewhere else and struggling in another part of your life as well. So the styling services I offer actually give you a deeper understanding of yourself to help you achieve the goals that you ultimately want to get to. And style is a huge reflection of that. The next thing I want to share with you, and it's more of an ask of you, is that if you have some time today to give a little love and support to the podcast, I'd really appreciate if you could leave a comment and a rating. This is a very simple gesture, 
but it makes a huge difference in helping this podcast grow and to reach more people. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and continue building a life and style that truly reflect you. I'll catch you next time.